University of Ghana is being run by management. So you can't succeed as a business without what we call management. So this puts us to what is management? Any ideas? Those who joined earlier, I told you to. All right, I have a. Um, is it Tracy? Tracy Tete. Yes, Madam, please. Good morning. Good morning. Madam, please, from my point of view, management is the process of directing, leading, decision making. And management is the process of directing, this, uh, making decisions, and leading a set of people or human resources, financial resources or physical resources towards a set goal. Mm. Okay, I think I'll take two more. Um, Abigail, is it a comfo? Oh. Am I am I right with your name? Yes, please, man. All right. What's your take on management? Oh, you can't hear Abigail. All right. Um, one more, Stephen. Stephen. Arthur. Okay. Okay, madam. Um. To my point of view, management is the process of influencing or controlling the activity, activities of an organization. Okay. I see a lot of hands up. I believe everybody has a right answer. So let's just continue so that we can do a lot today. So for the sake of those who are right, right, Management is the coordination and administration of tax. To achieve a goal. Management is the coordination and administration of tax to achieve a goal. So they involve administrative activities such as certain organizations strategy. Coordinating staff's efforts to achieve the said objectives. So, management is the coordination and administration of tasks to achieve a goal. They involve administrative activities such as certain organization strategy, coordinating staff efforts to achieve the said objectives. So in, in a business or in running a business, like I said earlier, Management is what key for effectiveness and efficiency. I think I, I let me share my screen. I forgot.
Right, that minute. Okay, guys, sorry, I'll share my screen soon, okay? But then let's proceed. I was saying that in business, right, management is key for effectiveness and then what efficiency purpose. So what comes to play when we talk of effectiveness? Anyone? Roda. Please, if you are not ready to answer questions or something, or when you are done talking, just put your hands down. Don't refuse. Hello. 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 Madam. Yes, who is calling? Me. I want to answer the efficiency and effectiveness. Oh, okay. Yeah, when we talk about efficiency, it means like using the resource wisely and cost effectively. And when we talk about the effectiveness, like efficiency means using the resource wisely and cost effectively. And when we talk about uh, effectiveness, like it means like the final results of you using the resources wisely and cost effectively. So it's like efficiency is the work done, like is the process of doing the work and the cost effective, uh, the effective effectiveness is the final results of what you got. Else. 
Madam, please, I want to give an example. Okay, I'm here. Let's see. Is, as you said, effectiveness talks about the end and efficiency talks about the means of getting the end. So let's say, for instance, Miss Nancy, you've given us a work to do and you told us to submit the work maybe three days later. Being efficient, I'll do mine um, two days before time or let's say I'll do mine today because you gave the work today. So that the third day, which is the day we have to submit, I'll submit mine. In doing that, it means I have been efficient. My effectiveness is when I wait and do the work on the third day and submit it on the same third day. At that time, I have completed the work, so I have been effective. My efficiency is when I save some of the days and do mine today and submit it. Okay. Please, that is what I want to share. Can you see my screen? No, please. No, please. No, please. But Miss Miss Nancy, please, did you get me? Yes. Okay. You have to show. You guys, you have to see my screen. Are you sure you can't see my screen? Madam, please, we can't see your screen. Madam, please, we can't see your screen. A minute, please. It, Okay, guys, let's continue, right, as I try to work on sharing my screen. So, effectiveness and what? Efficiency. Who is talking? Yes. Who is talking? Madam, please, I was asking that what I explained, please, is it clear? Yes, please. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so for the sake of those writers, effectiveness, okay? Effectiveness means doing the right things. Just something is effective if the intended result is produced. That is realizing goals. Effectiveness means doing the right things. Something is effective if the intended result is produced, that is realizing goals. And then efficiency means doing things the right way. Wow. 
one is efficient. If you use least resources to maximize what output, you are being what efficient. And that is what means of realizing goals. So effectiveness, you are realizing the goals, but efficiency is the means of realizing goals. Let's move on to management functions or functions of Madam Madam, please, I'm confused. Can you again? I said the effectiveness means what? Realizing goals. And then the if, uh, efficiency is the means of realizing goals. So effectiveness, doing the right thing, doing things right. So when you do something and then the intended result is produced, you are being what effective. And you are efficient when the process, the means of realizing your goals, like it makes you efficient. So you use maybe less resource to achieve a maximum output. It makes you efficient are we clear yes yes please so let's move on to management functions basically there are four key things Four key things managers what do or must do to complete the management function. The very first thing has to do with planning. So one of the management function and the first is planning. We have planning, we have organizing, we have leading, we have controlling. Planning is first because you can't control, what are you controlling? You can't lead if there is no plan. You can't organize if there is no plan. So the very first step in the management process or management function is planning. Hello. So with planning, your priorities. Who is talking? I'm sure, but I've not seen the message. The class has planning. In planning. You say what? It is the um, fundamental function of management. Okay. Okay. Let me let me have Which involves deciding beforehand. Larisha, I got a good idea. Please mute your mic. The Hello, same. Madam. Please, you said, yeah. Planning is the fundamental function of management. It is the basic, which involves deciding beforehand. So here, priorities are written. Madam, please, you said deciding before. Please, you said deciding before. Beforehand. Beforehand. 
Okay. So you set your priorities, you write them down. You come up with possible means of achieving them. So what is to be done, who to do it, where to do it, how to do it, are all part of the planning what process of management. So it's an intellectual process that spells out that's the organization's objective. Adam, please, we can't hear you. You can't hear me. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm saying that the planning process, okay, spells out what is to be done, who to do it, where to do it, how to do it. And again, it's an intellectual process that spells out the organization's objectives. And based on this plans, right, necessary actions are taken. in goal realization. So when you plan, you take action. You can't take action without planning. You plan your day. You plan your week. You plan your month. So you know that today you have class at 7.30. So you wake up early. You get prepared for the session. That is what's planning. In planning to, you have to what, think before action, like I said. You can't just take an action without plan. So every action is backed by, uh, is backed by a plan. Planning is also what's futuristic in a sense that a minute ahead is future, okay? So when you plan your next minute or your next hour, you are all thinking into the future. The planning is futuristic. It looks into the, it looks into the future. So making predictions, try to come up with ideas or giving out solutions to problems and all that. Falls under what planning. The next thing is organizing after you plan. After you write what needs to be done who should do it and all that. You have to what, organize. So we are saying that the second step in managing function after planning is organizing. With organizing, there is a bit of what, coordination and then arrangements.
What are we coordinating? Coordinate what? Human efforts. Please, you said a Please bit of coordination. Of arrangements. So human efforts are coordinated while resources are arranged to help achieve the organization's objectives. So we have a focus, we have a plan. How do we go about it? So in organization, there is what? I can't hear. Can you hear me? Yes, please. I'm saying that in order. Is it only me or everybody can hear? We can hear clearly. I can hear you perfectly well. We'll check your network. Madam. Tyson, hello. Madam, please. I had a question, but it seems you are not it's... attending to me. Why? A lot of hands are up, so I don't know who to call. Is it Bosu, Richard, and it's who? No. Uh, it's Rashid. Rashid. I had a question, but it seems I, the question was on the planning. But it seems now you are an organization. So let's continue. Uh, I wanted to ask okay. whether uh, decision decision making comes before planning or planning comes before decision making. That was the question. Okay, we'll get there. Then we will know whether planning comes before decision making. Or decision making comes after. Okay, okay. Thank you. So I'm saying that in organizing there's a there's what communication. Because you are coordinating human efforts, you have to what, communicate. There is a division of labor. Who does what? Position of staff, managers, executives, employees are spelled. Oh, no, please. Yeah. Line, your line is breaking. We can't really hear you. <laughs> Madam, please take it again. Is it better? No, we didn't hear anything. So please, can you start from when you were explaining? Take the whole session again so that we can quickly wrap up with it. I'm saying that organ um, organizing, right, is the second step in management, in the management function after planning. There is what coordination and then arrangements. What are we coordinating? We coordinate human efforts. We arrange resources to help achieve organizational objectives, right? And I'm saying in organizing, there has to be what communication, division of labor. Who does what? Authority responsibility structure. What are we talking about? The position of staff, managers, executives, employees are spelled out. Where the degree of what? 
authority and responsibility assigned to them. So that is organizing. The third the per degree of authority and responsibility. the degree of authority and responsibility assigned them. Please take the last sentence again. I'm saying. I'm saying authority responsibility structure. What, what do we mean by that? The position of staffs, managers, executives, and employees are spelled out by the degree of authority and responsibility assigned to them. The third management function is leading. Madam, please, I have a question. Please note your question now. Or you ask, ask, you would come back to it. Is the specialization question, does it also come within the organization? Come again. Specialization. Mm -hmm. Does it come with, during the management function of organizing? Specialization. It falls under it because you have to what because of the authority um, responsibility structure, right? Yeah. You try to um, apportion or assign specifically certain tasks to people. You can't give a manager's duty to an employee. You get it? Yes. Yeah. Right. So the third one is what leading. So when it comes to leading as a management function, you are saying that as a leader, okay, having a group of people. As a leader, have a leading or handling a group of people, you have to what? Master your skills in pulling your members or all members to a consensus to help achieve. <laughs> Organizational objectives. Madam, please come again. I'm saying, as a leader, right? A leader handling a group of people. You have to master. Your skills in pulling in all members to a consensus. To a consensus. I'm getting a feedback. Your light breaking on. I'm getting a feedback. Um, your line is breaking. Is, is it still breaking? Okay, yeah, no. yeah. Is it still breaking? Yeah. Yeah. I think if we are all on mute, if we all mute ourselves, it will stop. So let's all mute ourselves.
So can I proceed? So can I is it better? Yes. Is it better? Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the people you are leading, right? Should have one mindset. Should have. And they should be what? Zealous to work. Uh, please, I'm a four penny. Your mic is on. So, before the leading um, process can be what's effective, you, the leader, or you, the uh, manager, or whoever, supervisor, whoever, you have to what? Master your skills in leadership. Okay? And you have to, leading also comes with communication. You have to communicate. Because as a leader, you have to know the people you are working with. You have to be able to pull them to work. They all have to work. They have the objectives of the organization so that they can run with it with the help of the leader. So if you don't know your staff, you wouldn't know how to deal with them. Maybe how you would deal with Mr. A, if you deal with Mr. B the same way, there will be some sort of offenses and stuff. So if you know your people, you know your members, you know your employees, you know your staff, you know how to what, carry them along to achieve organizational what, objectives. This can help you motivate them, you know? In all means possible to get them working. So why are we leading? We are leading towards achieve a focus or a target. And we need people. So characters vary among what people or employees. So you motivate them in their specialities to get them what's working. You give guidance communicate effectively you influence them one way or the other get things done we are saying that leading is what the third management function And you need to what, possess some leadership qualities before you can lead effectively. So, um, note this down. This is an assignment, right? List and explain 10 leadership qualities. List and explain 10 leadership qualities. And then name five great leaders and what made them stand out it's an assignment to this note name madam to just good assignment name five great leaders and what made them stand out Names I bring is and please the grace leaders is it Ghana or the whole world? We should just name any one. You are not restricted. Okay. Now please the first and the first. The first Listen one is name five. Listen and explain. List list and explain ten leadership qualities. I'm not going to admit it. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> submit it. So please, submission, submit it in a PDF format. I think um, after the class, um, I'll talk with Kennedy to pass on the information. I need you to be in groups. I think uh, we'll discuss that after. We'll discuss that. Madam, right. So the fourth one is controlling. Madam, please, the question two. Name five great leaders and what made them stand out. Thank you. So the fourth management function is what's controlling. So this is where you compare actual performance with standards. If there is a default, you quickly what? map up new strategies to correct it. With controlling, you verify whether everything is in conformity with a real plan. So under controlling, we do what we call evaluation. Are we clear? Please take it again. So I'm saying that with controlling as the first management function, we do what we call comparison. So you compare actual performance with standards. So if there is shortcomings, you quickly want to map up new strategies to correct them. You verify whether everything is in conformity with the real plan. Are we doing it right? What we said we would do, is this what we are doing? Evaluations are made. Okay. So in controlling, I think we have four steps. The very first one is what? Establish the standards. Morning. So we have four steps. The first one is what? Establish the standards. Please, four steps for what? Controlling. In controlling, there are four things to be done. Establish standards. Second one, you have to measure your performance. The third one, you compare your actual performance to standards, the standards you set. Then if there Number is a last pardon, compare. compare actual performance to standards. And 
And then the fourth one is take corrective measures. Take corrective measures. Let's move on to levels of management. Yes, please. Take corrective. Take corrective measures. Please, we're talking about said management process. We are always making mention of leading. Can you just step in control again? Yeah. Hey. My lady, what did you say? Please, when talking about the third management process, we were talking about leading, leading, leading. In the right context, I think it is using directing, things that uh, involve the leading and giving some influence and rather than focusing on leading alone. Well, I'm also struggling to hear you, but I heard you mention leading. Leading is the third management function. Yes, and I'm like, I think in the right context, you could keep in directing to. Directing. Yes, please. Come so, again with that statement. I feel like. In your third explanation of the management process, you are making mention of leading as being the third. But then I think directing could be that too because direction process involves leading people, giving instructions, influencing to attain or be able to achieve your organizational goal. Okay, but then let's stick to what we have in our slides, right? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, I'm not what's the name? Wrong. Um, uh, I'm not what's the name? It's how I you would explain. Yes, um, Nancy. Yeah. Nancy Jackson here. Please let me step in. All right. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. So, um, the lady with a question. All right. Leading and directing yeah. are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So leaders do direct, and so you. Have that we're talking about authority. I don't know whether you guys have gotten there, but once you're a leader, you are given the authority. Authority is actually the power or the legitimacy that we've been given to you, or I mean, the organization has given to you as a leader to actually direct people to help the organization achieve its goals. Do you understand? And so, usually, when you read certain books, they tend to um, distinguish between lead, leading and directing. If you read other books, you realize that leading and directing are actually the same things. Okay, uh -huh. it depends on the book that you are reading. But then, in the right sense, leaders are the ones who do direct. Do you get the point? And so, leaders and leading and directing are more of the same things. Do you understand? Uh -huh. Because it's the leader that actually gives the direction for the organization. It's the leader that, that actually gives the direction to the employees to achieve whatever task that has been given to them. I hope it settles it right. Yes, Thank you. Great. All right. Thank, thank you, Jackson. You. Okay, so let's move on. Levels of management. We have three levels of management. So the very thank first you. one is top level managers or management, middle level, and then we have the supervisory. Hey. That and we have the supervisory managers. So, with the top level management, they are the top managers who make long term decisions for the organization. They make long term decisions. For the organization. Yeah. 
they establish the objectives, strategies, and policies. Madam, Madam, please, the installation for the top level management. They are top managers, the top level management, they are top managers who make long term decisions. For the organization do they establish the objectives strategies and policies Hello. Hello. for the organization to keep it focused on its strategic direction Hello. yes please Please, I have a question. Uh, please note please. your questions down. Please note your questions down. Okay. Right, sorry. Thank you. Madam, please take that. He's a top level manager. Madam, please, can you take a top level management again for us, please? I'm saying they are managers, they are top managers who make long term decisions for the organization. They establish the objectives, strategies, and policies for the organization to keep it focused on the strategic direction. So every business or every organization, institution, company whatsoever, have a focus, have a target, have a goal. So the top managers strategize Give direction and all that as to how what get there or achieve that goal or something. Then the middle level management, they break down the top level management strategies. They break it down by what? Implementing it. So top managers plan. They set up strategies, then middle level management implement what the top level management are what the decisions they've taken and all that. I'm saying the middle level management, they are managers who implement. The strategies made or decisions or plans set by the top level managers. So they implement decisions from the managers above them, that is top level managers. Then supervise and coordinate the activities of supervisory managers below them, which is what the third level of management, supervisory managers. They actually carry out daily activities like daily decisions, daily plans, what should be done, who to do it. So they are more or less like the operational. And the middle level are more or less like the tactical. Then the top level is more or less like the strategic. A week late.
So let's move on to decision making. So one of your colleagues was asking, do we plan before decision or we take decision before we plan? Actually, you have to have a plan before you take decisions. Plan. So Rashid. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Rashid is off. Rashid are, you there? Rashid, are you there? So Rashid, decision you are out. Isn't decision making on the plan? And I have a question. Who is that? Not, Isn't not your decision question. making and a plan? Come again. I was asking if decision making is under planning. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. So, Rashid, Rashid, Hello. anybody who knows Rashid, tell Rashid that I said he can't come. Uh, he can't come and ask the question and then go online. I'm again with the law of management. I'm telling you. Uh, Madam, please, we are giving another, another name for the lower level management. I don't know you. The lower level management is more or less like operational or operations. Okay, and then what of the middle then, level management? Middle level is tactical. And then the top level is strategic. Okay, thank you. All right, so please let's move on to decision making. Else, we're not finished today. I have a question. Note your questions down. Okay. Let's wrap up so that I'll take all your questions. It's likely that along the line we'll be answering some of your questions as well. Always good. Mm -hmm. All right, so everybody needs to make or either you make a decision or you take a decision, okay? In this life, everybody makes a decision. So therefore, decision making is what important in daily life and business, wherever you find yourself, decision making is very, very important. In management, decisions are what? Key. The, de the decisions made by management or made. <laughs> Either affect you positively or negatively. In business, one needs to make a decision because you may encounter a situation. Where multiple 
options of opportunity or solutions. Can I go for it? And you need to make a choice from that options. And before you take or make a decision, you have to first identify the problem or opportunity. So in decision making, the first thing is identify the problem or opportunity. For example, lettering, okay, lettering around let's say uh, Medina market is a problem. So if you are a business or let's take for instance Zoom Lion, right? I'm sure the person who came up with this Zoom Lion deal had issues with littering, so it's a problem. So the person sat down has to come up with possible solutions or ideas to either stop littering or curb it. So that's brainstorming of what to do to end or stop littering becomes what the second stage in decision making. That is where you dream up possible solutions. So after you identify the problem or opportunity, you dream up possible solutions. So how can we stop lecturing? Maybe we have to what, do public education or we have to what, uh, go around picking ourselves or probably um, establish a, a Zoom Lion company. To help us with it. So you are dreaming how the possible means, how best can you stop the problem? So after you dream up possible options or solutions, you then what? Weigh alternative solutions and then select one. So that becomes the third phase or stage in decision making, you weigh the alternatives. Then the fourth one, after you select one, you then you evaluate it. You implement the solution, then you evaluate it. So after implementation, how do you evaluate it? Evaluation comes as and when you compare your actual performance with the standards you set or what you perceive to be. Let's move on to benefits of planning. When you plan, you deal with what? Uncertainty. So dealing with uncertainty is one benefit of planning. When you plan, you become more certain. You are sure of any action you are what, about taking or take. And probably the end result. You are sure there's nothing like, will it end well? Because you know that this is a surety analysis or a surety uh, thing you are what you're going to carry out. You are sure, like, no doubt about that. When you plan, plan, you plan well, you deal with the uncertainty. When you plan, another benefit is what? Thinking ahead. So in the planning process, you think ahead, right? You make, uh, it makes you think futuristic. It makes you think, it makes you 
I don't know how to put this, but as and when you think into the future, you are certain of the changes because let's, for instance, there is a an innovation or a technological advancement somewhere and you are a business, you are a manufacturing business, right? You deal with technology, you deal with machines, you deal with equipment. So as and when you are abreast with what is happening, you think ahead, you, you foresee that, oh, in the next two, three years, a new invention will come up, which will help you in your manufacturing process. So you plan of how to get that equipment into your manufacturing company to help you with your production. So it helps you think into the future. And with that, there is what this. Uh, <laughs> And then when you plan as well, it helps you coordinate activities. It helps you coordinate activities. It makes it easy for coordination. Please listen and let's continue. Those who are talking, I've noticed all of them. It will come with the cost. So me, let's 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 focus. The fourth thing or oh, the fourth benefit, you can what evaluate your progress. Because you have a plan. Yes. The third, what up is the third one? The third one is coordinating activities. Because you have a plan, it makes it easy for coordination. Who does what? Where? How should we go about it? Is the second one. The fourth one is evaluating progress because you have a plan as and when the business perform or as and when there is progress you can what compare the actual progress with the set standards or plan please can you repeat the second one again planning makes you think ahead Futuristic. Thank you. So we plan based on the vision and mission we have. We plan based on a vision or a mission. So then this draws us to what is vision. So vision is what you want to become, what the business wants to become, what you as an individual wants to become. what the organization wants to become or what the organization wants to be known for or to be known as. So the organization wants to be known as or the organization is known for or the organization wants to become. That becomes what? The vision. So for, for instance, the vision of UGBS for the business school, right, is to, be, is to become a world-class business school, developing global leaders. So that is what the vision of UGBS, to become, see per the, per the definition, it says what you want to become. And in the vision, uh, the vision 
of UGBS, it says what? To become a world class. So the underlining keyword there is to become. So what is UGBS known for? They are known for what? Developing global leaders. Then mission. Mission is being the fundamental purpose. Means that a journey to a destination in which the whole organization is engaged. The mission statement of every organization spells out their goal, their direction or ways. To go about, about it. So the mission statement of every organization spells out the goals, ways, or direction. So after the session, you can check the mission of UGBS. So the mission also shows what the business or the institution organization is into, why they exist, and what purpose it serves. So all falls under the mission statement of every organization. We are moving on. Types of planning. So with planning, we have a strategic plan, we have tactical plan, we have operational plan. What is strategic plan? Strategic plan is a long-term plan made by top-level managers. You see the connection now? Yes. All right. Yes, madam. Your strategic planning is a long-term plan made by top-level managers for over one to five, for over one year time period, okay, but not more than five years. It helps the business in sharing the direction of the company. In the next three to five years. But yes. Go over go over so I'm saying strategic planning is a long term plan made by top level managers. For over one year time period, but not more than five years. It helps the business in sharing. It helps the business in sharing the direction of the company in the next three to five years. So the strategic plan is what carries the overall business motive or, or objectives. Let's move on to tactical planning. Tactical planning is a short term
is a short-term plan drawn from the what strategic plan. So with the tactical plan, plans are break down into smaller components or units to aid in facilitating objectives to achieve a desired end and mostly is between six to 12 months duration immediately it exceeds that then we are he we are diving or moving into what a strategic plan Madam, please mm -hmm. say tactics. when we say tactics from the word tactical it's a strategy right it's also a strategy used to achieve each, each goal created in the tactical plan. So the tactical plan, let's say it's a subset of the strategic plan, but then it's, bro it's breaking into what pieces to help what achieve it. So tactics is a strategy used to achieve each goal created in the tactical plan as a whole. The third one is operational planning. So operational planning has to do with the day-to-day -day plans geared towards achieving organizational goal. And they are mostly within the range of one to fifty-two weeks. Madam. Yes. Can you please come again? The operational planning. Operational planning. They are the day-to-day -day plans geared towards achieving organizational goals or objectives. Miss Nancy, please, the duration again for the operational. Pardon? There are plans executed within one to what, 52 weeks. Please, please, madam, with the operational plan, can you start again? Operational planning has to do with day to day plans. The daily plans we make as a business or as as management. So we have levels of so the the operational planning moves in line or is interconnected with the supervisory managers. They basically run the operational aspects. And then the tactical connects with middle level management, and then the strategic planning connects with the um, top level managers. So the next thing we are looking at now is SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T analysis. But I'm, I have a question. Please come. Uh, you have to note your questions now. Madam. Yes. Uh, yes contingent missing. planning. Does it fall under the type of plan or contingency planning? Contingency. contingency. Yeah. Okay. To address that. Let's move on. I have to finish quickly. But I will address your questions, right? I just want to note it that Madam. Yes. 
And that means there's sorts. Is it in capital letters so is it an abbreviation for something? So it's it's in capital letters. So capital S, capital W, capital O, capital T. SWOT analysis. Yes. The time duration for the various type of planning. So for strategic, the time duration is one to five years. Tactical, ah. six to 24 months. Operational is one to 52 weeks. So oh. SWOT analysis, what is SWOT analysis? Right. For every management, or every business needs to what? Do or yeah, needs to do a SWOT analysis. So a SWOT analysis is a technique for assessing the performance, competition risks, and potentials of a business. SWOT analysis is a technique for assessing the performance, competition, risks, and potential of a business. So the capital S and capital W, which stands for strength and weaknesses are internal. <laughs> internal analysis that needs to be made. And then go and see opportunities. Stands for opportunities and threats, and that is external. Please, opportunity and what? Opportunities and threats are external analysis. Then strengths and weaknesses are internal analysis. So we strength you very well. SWOT analysis, right? I'm saying strength and weaknesses are internal analysis that the business organization what makes. Then opportunities and threats are external analysis carried out by the business organization. And I define SWOT analysis as a technique for assessing the performance, competition, risks, and potential of a business. What then is strength? When we talk about strength, what are we talking about? So the strength of a business, right, is what the business was has that gives the business organization a competitive advantage over its competitors. So what you have, that gives you an upper hand or an advantage, a competitive one, of course, over your competitors is your strength. So your internal, um, let's say HR, if you have high skilled HR personnel, you have a strong brand. It gives you that, for instance, Coca-Cola, nobody can take the position of Coca-Cola. They have their internal, um, their strength, like they have a very solid internal uh, uh, strength, right? So nobody can outweigh them. They are so unique. Their brand is also very strong. So that is the strength. And the weakness. Weakness are the shortcomings, the faults of the business. So with weakness, your competitors rather would uh, have an advantage over you.
your competitors gain advantage over you. What will result in this? When your HR personnel or your HR human resource is weak, it can affect your performance. Lack of competent staff. Competent staff walls, competent skill personnel. Lack of technological Lack. innovation. So as and when you are a manufacturing company, but then let's say you uh, you manufacture uh, uh, let's let me, uh, let me just use HP HP laptops. Then iPhone and this a uh, normal Samsung <laughs> normal Android phones. No, there is an invention. iPhone is always coming up with uh, something new, like there is grades in iPhone, though other phones also have grades, though. But you see that competition, everybody wants to move to iPhone, iPhone, look at the iPhone, iPhone. What makes them, what, what gives them um, that advantage? For instance, if your preference is uh, techno, techno spark, Right, that's your preference. But then along the line, you see all your colleagues getting iPhone. So you're like, hey, what's so unique with iPhone? Then let me also try and what get that. When it happens like that, you you the business, you are losing what uh, customers, and that becomes a weakness for you. If you can't trace it, you you produce techno, and all your customers will go and buy iPhone. Let's continue. Opportunities. The opportunities. They are the what? Favorable conditions. That gives an organization, a business, or a company an advantage over others. So, for instance, a country cuts off tariff. Madam, please can I come again. I'm saying that with opportunities, they are favorable conditions. That gives a business, an organization, or a company an advantage over others. So I'm citing an example that, let's say, for instance, you are a manufacturing company, okay? Then uh, uh, you hear that a country has cut off eight tariffs. Obviously, you see that as an opportunity. So you begin to uh, export your product to that country, and you, you begin to make sales. Then we have trades, which is the last one. There are factors that can impact the organization of business in a bad way. It can harm it. That it can harm its progress. So that is threat. Anything, anything like you see, we have the saying. Um, it's not just a saying, but it's in the Bible, though. So let me just put that aside. It's fine. 
So threats are factors that can impact the company in a bad way. It can harm its progress. So anything that so that introduces the company to what risk. So anything that can um, come in or affect the business in a bad way, anything at all. If your competitors are outweighing you in all dimensions, they are just pulling your customers like that. It's straight. It could also be policies from governments because they are external, right? So it could be policies from government, uh, rising of uh, cost of materials, high competition. Pressure, pressure from government, taste, taste or preference, change in preference. That's a threat. Because you are producing, a, let's say, yummy yogurt, all of a sudden, your customers switch to different yogurts. It, it becomes a threat. There is high competition out there. So that's basically for SWOT analysis. Let's quickly look at organizational charts. I think we'll be done. Organizational charts. So organizational charts, I'm defining as a diagram. <laughs> That displays a reporting or relationship hierarchy. Organization is a diagram. That displays a reporting or relationship hierarchy. So it often includes Madam. Yes. Can you please repeat it again? The organization is a diagram that displays a reporting or relationship hierarchy. It often includes vertical lines of authority. Legislating who reports to whom. And horizontal specialization. Legislating. Madam. Yes. It often includes. It often includes vertical line of authority designated sorry designating who reports to whom and horizontal specialization designating who specializes in what Ms. Nancy. Yes, please. 
please can you uh, the uh, second line is so the second one is horizontal specialization so let me just take it all over it often includes vertical line of authority designating who reports to whom and horizontal specialization designating who specializes in what basically the work right the what work is fine right. We are moving on. Management needs to what? Possess certain skills. And what are these skills? One skills management needs to what? Possess is tactical skills. So management skills. One, tactical skills. Tactical skills, we are saying the ability to perform a specific job. Management should be what? Tactical. Madam, please, the ability to... The ability to perform a specific job. Management needs to be what tactical or should be tactical the ability to execute or perform a specific job madam please is it technical or tactical 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 The second skill management needs to possess is human skills. Human skills. Your ability to communicate. You need to have what? A good communication skill. The third management skill is Conceptual skill. Conceptual skill. Your ability to think analytically. What do we mean by thinking an analytically? It means your ability to dismantle information or data to understand facts your ability to think analytically what do we mean by that the ability to dismantle information or data to understand facts which can help in drawing up evidence-based conclusions. I don't believe drawing up words. Evidence-based Conclusions. Level is that the fourth one? That is conceptual skill, the third management skill. And I'm pleased to draw up evidence based conclusions.
you're able to figure out this is it, these are facts. So management deals with what facts? Yeah, almost. Sorry. I'm going to pass the program. Ten minutes more. Sorry, I'm going to sneak it. Let's go catch it for my sister. You guys went to the pins, right? You guys went to the pins. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? Hey, Ella, please meet Mike. Oh. Are we are we good? Yeah. yeah. All right. So please, um, next week we are not done with this slide. So next week we'll continue. We'll touch a bit on leading. Okay. We'll touch a bit on leading. Uh, we'll touch a bit on uh, transaction and then transformation. It's all under leading, so that's fine. So we'll touch a bit on leading, a bit on controlling, and we get to know the controlling process. We have, to, we have to execute, uh, let me just say, um, leave the platform for the next group to join. So, yes, Miss Nancy. Please send your slides to us. <laughs>